and technology is still evolving too fast. I think that this is one of the fastest evolving areas of web development, performance and speed. So it's very technical. It limits your website. So once you start thinking about speed, it's no, 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 no. Like everything is a no if you want to be fast. Um, it's not obvious the impact on the business because you don't know how much money you're going to lose if you are 0 0.2 seconds slower. So it's not clear. And everyone else is ignoring it. So let's just ignore it, you know, like everyone else. So my talk is to make your website fast. And it's going to, I'm going to try because I, I have tried to do a lot of optimizations and I have um, followed all the possible paths you can imagine. Even trying to redo the WordPress core engine was one of the paths that I tried to do. And it was not a very good one, by the way. I'm not an expert on performance. I think it's extremely hard to be an expert in this. You can talk for one year about the first 0 0.2 milliseconds that the website takes to load. So it's, it's a very deep and technical stuff. I, know, I don't think I'm an expert, but at least I have tried to do it uh, several times. It's almost impossible to hit 100% in Google, so don't become obsessed with it. Um, I'm not going to try to be very technical because I know that a lot of people here are not developers. And uh, especially the story that I'm going to try to share is the one trying to optimize the website of For Geeks Academy. So why do I care about speed? I think this is one of the biggest crises in WordPress right now. Uh, we should be like the ONU should be talking about this, about speed in the internet in general. Um, and this is in numbers how big the crisis is. Uh, per industry, you have out, uh, all the biggest industries and how, how fast are they right now loading the website. The, the yellow line you see there, it's the industry standard, like the best practice that you should follow. And the white line, it's what Google asks for you to, be, to become like a real, to have an okay, like a good okay. Yeah, so that you hit 100%. I thought, it, I thought it was easy, and I, like, after a while, I just gave up. I, I, I managed to hit 100%, but I gave up so much limitations, uh, so much functionalities that I uh, went back to 95 or 90% because 100%, it's, it's crazy. So 70% of visits will come from 3G connections in 2020, so you do care about speed. Google Chrome has, uh, in the inspector, if you open the inspector in Google Chrome, it has a way of throttling your connection so you can uh, simulate a 3G connection if you want. Um, it takes, for every two seconds of loading time, you have 20% more bounces. And it's now a ranking factor since like five years ago, but it's, it's, it's bigger every day, the, the influence on the, your ranking factor for search engine optimization. 40% of the visitors expect a web to load in two seconds, in less than two seconds, and 40% leaves the the page after after it takes more than three seconds. And the industry is nine, eight, seven. So basically, it's a mess, right? Um, and it affects your business everywhere. This is one of these key metrics that is going to affect everything. And eventually, your revenue, of course. Um, so what's the goal? It's to have the fastest possible website without modifying the WordPress core. Like, don't, don't go into the WordPress core because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a battle that you're going to end up losing. You don't want to sacrifice WordPress. If, if you want to sacrifice WordPress and redo the, the core, then you should use uh, Laravel or another framework. And what is the core? Why do I keep talking about this? Well, the, the plugins, Gutenberg, themes, and the REST API, lives on the WordPress core. So you don't want to touch that, or you're going to sacrifice the API, the plugins, the Gutenberg, and the themes. What are the enemies of the speed? Well, requests in the internet. A request is the enemy of speed. A script is the enemy of speed. Fonts, styles, databases, images, plugins, plugins, and plugins. Those are the biggest enemies. So basically, everyone is an enemy of the, of the speed. Basically, the best website, it's just a, 
a PDF, maybe, a, not even a PDF, like a, an HTML Hello World, that will be the fastest website in the world. So it's hard. It's extremely hard. Um, it's easy to make a slow website. All you have to do is not to try to do a fast one. And, and this is, I put this here because that's exactly what happens. Like, you don't think about it. We should start thinking about it. This article is amazing. If you're technical, if you're a developer, you should read it. This guy tried to do something similar with React. He tried to redo the React core, and he shows the entire path. It's like three blog posts on how on website optimization. I think this post inspired me a lot, and this guy, it's, it's very hilarious. Like, his way of writing, it's also super cool. So top 10 things to make your site faster. Pick your theme, thinking on speed, when you go to Google, Search top 10, instead of searching top 10 themes of 2018, search top 10 themes of 2018 uh, fast, whatever, like with good performance. Uh, the hosting is also extremely important. Don't just use, use a cheap hosting. Try, try to use a cheap, good hosting that has speed. Use a CDN, this is a must, like all the others. Use a catching plugin, compress your images, compress your code lead your critical path, uh, load your critical path in line. This is extremely hard, so you don't have to do the seven right now, but I think it's important. Uh, use PHP 7 instead of PHP 5 or 6, make, or, or 5 because there's no 6. Make your site compatible with AMP. This is a Google standard. So I'm going to uh, speed up now because I don't have much time. For the page rank, for the page speed rank, you should go to searching Google, Google Speed Test, and right now you can search if your website is fast or not in Google Speed Test. Google Page Speed Test, not Google Speed, because that's, gonna, that's for the internet connection, but Google Page Speed. And then you put your URL and Google is going to give you a score. And uh, if you haven't done anything, you're going to be ashamed of that, because it's going to be an ugly score. But don't worry, it's, it's easy to be a lot better in, in speed if you think about what I'm saying right now, if you pick a good theme, et, et cetera. Um, what I was saying, search for the, the fastest WordPress themes 2018. Think about that. Oh, I'm going to the other side. A content delivery network is also important because it's, a, it's a, a layer that goes in between your website and your users, in between your server and your users, and it, it's only for speed purposes. So they are going to load your website in a different server that is faster than yours. So you should use a CDN. And it has a lot of other perks. So like uh, it protects you from security stuff. So it's also very good. Um, the caching plugins are extremely important. Here in the bottom are the fastest ones, the, the, the best ones, I think. To compress your images, oh, this plugin is amazing. Compressing the code is hard, but if you use this plugin, this plugin is one of the ones that don't have many issues because compressing the code is so hard that most of the plugins break your website if you try to compress the code. But with this plugin, I haven't had any issues and I have used them uh, a lot. Um, AMP, it's a standard that Google uh, is trying to, to propose and a lot of websites are, are using it. And it, if you use AMP, like right the moment you start using it, you're in a different page, in a different part of the page. In the, in the top results, they have a special page for AMP if you're searching in Google in a mobile device. So it's, I think it's extremely important to install the AMP WordPress plugin. It was developed by Automatic. Um, and beware of plugins. Please don't, don't use plugins. Like I think I have, a, I, I have a, a key metric that I try not to have more than 15 plugins in a website. At the beginning, it seems easy, but as your website starts growing, you, you start installing and installing and installing. Try not to have more than 15 plugins. Maybe you should hire a developer and try to incorporate that in the theme instead of using another plugin. Because plugins, you don't know how, well, the quality of the code sometimes, and they, are, they actually sacrifice a lot of the speed. This is a to-do list of things you should use and recommendations on my site. Um, the good news, believe it or not, is that you only need to be faster than anyone else and everybody is doing pretty bad. So if you really start thinking about this, it's going to be good for you. It's, it's going to give you a lot of 
a lot of good things. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Okay, there. Yeah, the, the slides are in the same place uh, of all the speaker slides. I don't know the, the URL. Maybe you know the URL for the slides. I don't know it offhand, but they will post that after the event. They'll, they'll send out a note where all the slides are. They do it every year. So. Yeah. Well, when you install AMP, the, it's a plugin, so they basically take over your website on mobile devices. Like now, you're gonna, you have to be very integrated with the WordPress core, so WordPress knows how to grab your posts, pages, or custom posts, and publish them in a different way, in a WordPress way. Because when you're browsing mobile, you don't need much of the stuff. And you should think about that when you're building the post, because you know that the content of the post is the only thing that is gonna be published. Everything else, like a sidebar, all of that is going to go away. So if you, for example, want to have a call to action for marketing purposes, you should put it in the text. That way, if you have a call to action or, or something that, if you're trying your users to click somewhere, you should put it in the text. Because that's the only thing that is going to show on the AMP version of the website, on the AMP version. Any other questions? A page builder, well, the, I don't know, that I have used Visual Composer and, and some others, and I think if, if you use AMP, they are gonna uh, remove all the, the, um, the shortcuts. All the shortcuts, all the extra stuff is gonna be removed because it's not gonna be used. So imagine when you are, you can actually, in, in any page builder, you can switch to the to the HTML version, and you're going to see the shortcuts. Imagine them, when you see the, the text, imagine them going away, that they're not there, and that's how your website is going to be. But the good thing is that you can test live. Like, you can actually build your website and test your AMP, AMP version. Yeah? How to keep the web? Uh, for, the, for the pictures, actually, the best plugin that I've used is... Um, it's this big bear, yeah. It's a uh, tiny PNG. I think it's amazing. It's like 60% compression on, on your images, and you don't lose any quality at all. So I will, I will install that one. OK, so um, Alejandro will be at the happiness bar if you have additional questions. We do have to wrap it up now. So if I can have a, a final round of applause for a great presentation.